What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes and this video today is sponsored by the awesome folks at Video Blocks and Audio Blocks. And our question today comes from Nathan and Nathan writes, Hi Ted, I've been working as a photographer for a year now full time. I am looking for services to expand my business and I'm thinking of offering video to my clients. Is this a viable idea and how would I go about getting started? Thanks, Nathan. Nathan, excellent question, and I will do my best to answer it. So first of all, congratulations on your success so far, uh, working for yourself as a photographer. And do I think uh, video is a service that you can provide to expand your business? Absolutely, and there are a lot of photographers doing that these days. And that's where I wanna talk about the second part. And you know, it's a natural progression for a photographer to want to go into doing video work. Um, most cameras now, if you're shooting digital cameras, uh, they are capable of at least HD video, and some of these cameras now have 4K on them so it does seem like a natural progression to move to video from there however you probably have noticed that what you see coming out of photographers a lot of times is essentially music videos of b-roll either synced or drifting over music and that's kind of the standard of what photographers start to do when they get into the video and they don't embrace video as a medium and you asked how would you go about doing this and I think this is the important thing to understand is what is video as a medium and how does that differentiate from still photography because this is where you can really have an edge over your competition in terms of being a photographer who offers video. So one of the great things about still images that I've always loved about photography is what you're doing is you're representing a moment in time that is captured uh, either on paper or on screen that people look at and it, 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 you through things like composition, use of color, use of black and white, use of light, you can tell a story in that fraction of time and I think that's one of the things that is very special to me about photography and what makes photography so magical to me personally. Um, and most good photographers uh, understand that that's what that medium is. Now when you move to video it is very different because rather than displaying a moment that's frozen in time or maybe a long moment that's frozen in time depending on whether it's a long exposure or just a, uh, a short exposure, video has an actual timeline to it. So you are watching it in a linear fashion and you have usually a beginning, middle, end. There's some kind of form that starts to take shape there. And what it comes down to is much like still photography is you're communicating and you're telling a story. That's the most important thing. It has nothing to do with the equipment you're using. It has nothing to do with the techniques that you're using, um, what kinds of motion you're using, what your color correction software is. It's can you tell a story. And that's where you're going to stand out from your competition. Now, obviously, just doing a video in a couple minutes here, I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg for you. I would start down this path, I would research as much as possible, decide what you like that different people do, whether that's a full length feature film or whether it's a short piece, and I would start to analyze it in that sense. How is a story being told? Because that's what it's going to come down to. Now, what's interesting about this is, you know, unlike editing software for still photos, whether you're using Lightroom or Photoshop or something like that, you're using a non-linear non editor when you are editing video. So whether that's Premiere or whether that's something on the low end like you know Microsoft Movie Maker or iMovie, basically what you're doing is you're cutting your clips and timing is everything. And that is the most important thing I can possibly tell you. As far as how to get started on this, what I would do is a couple things. First of all, I would consider doing a personal project. Uh, personal projects, just like in photography, when you're learning a new style or you're putting new work into your portfolio, you're switching mediums when you go to video. So it's important to find some personal projects you can start on. The cool thing about personal projects is you really never know where they're gonna go. And I've told you guys before on this show that this show itself started as a personal project. I was working at the Dallas Museum of Art and they wanted me to start going into producing video and I'd really never done it before. So I needed some project I could do to make all of my mistakes on and learn the medium and that's exactly what I did and I never intended it to go this long and here we are several years and several hundred episodes later and I'm still doing it in fact more serious than ever but this show started as a personal project so personal projects are really key I know filmmakers who have actually movies have been born out of personal projects and I think that's really exciting so what I would do is I would take something and try and tell a story and you can take a concept you can take uh, you can make up a story um, you can just try you know there's a wonderful video I saw the other day that was based around a tweet you could take something and try to communicate that story in video and I think that that's a wonderful challenge um, conceptually and also in terms of thinking on this timeline all of a sudden 
And when you're editing this and working through it, I mean, a lot of the work is done in editing and in post too. Is the footage too long? Am I taking too long to get to the point? Many of you who watch the show know that sometimes I take too long to get to the point. Or am I not giving enough information? And there's a really sweet balance between the two when you're editing video together that's really important. So I think that's one thing that can help you if you're trying to understand videos, understanding that storytelling component. What's gonna happen is if you can get your hand around this and you can start to understand it, is that you're going to have a major edge up on a lot of your competition because quite frankly, that's what most people do um, that are shooting on a photography level and all of a sudden start moving into doing some video. They don't realize that they're two different things and that's really important to understand. Um, and also when you're doing your personal projects, as I mentioned, you know, the tweet video that I was talking about, you don't have to make things long at all. You can do things that are really short. In fact, when I was at the Dallas Museum of Art, some of my favorite things to do when we, when we did television commercials or television spots for exhibitions that we had, and we did several of those when I was there, um, typically your main commercial is going to be about a 30 second spot. And for some reason, that was just a really cool challenge for me to do because I'm the kind of person who will start trying different things and experimenting way too much and going way over on time and, and you know, a budget's forced, but I would have too many options without the restrictions. So having that 30 second restriction forces you to get to the point. It forces you to edit things out that aren't important and it's important for you to tell your story. And those are my favorite projects to do. Um, they could be really difficult too. Um, generally when you do media buys for television placement, there's several different formats you can do. So the 30 second is typically the standard, and then there's usually a 10 second version, so you might have some cheaper airtime that's possible to buy, and then sometimes there's a 15 second as well. And it's weird because the 10 second, I would always base off the 30 second. So if I could get my message there, it's about culling it down just to the specific message. And then for some reason, that 15 second spot was the weird one, because it was enough time to put something back in too, but it was only five seconds. And so that was always the toughest, was that 10 to 15 version. But anyway, my point is, is that that's the kind of stuff I would be looking to do. If you're looking, you didn't mention in here what kind of clients you have, so I don't know, but if you're shooting weddings, let's say, well, you could go shoot the wedding and put it to music and put some B-roll behind it, and generally people like to look at that stuff and could be very happy. It's still very competitive because that's what your competition is doing. But maybe try and think beyond that just a step, and maybe you could go sit down and do an interview with the bride and the groom and talk about how they met, and maybe you could use visuals to retell that story, so there's an idea. Uh, maybe you don't do weddings, maybe you actually do commercial work. Well, what kind of clients do you have? Clients, um, particularly corporations or at least companies that have ever done any marketing at all, know what their message is. And so what is the message of their product or service that they're getting out? And how do you communicate that visually? And learn how to show that because that's where you're going to be more in demand, I think, um, as somebody who's actually producing video rather than an additional product or service they can buy from you as a photographer. I would not think of it like that. I don't think that's going to get you far enough, and I think it's going to be equally as competitive as to where you are now. One other thing I can recommend to you, our sponsor today is the awesome folks over at Video Blocks and their sister company, Audio Blocks. And Video Blocks is actually pretty cool. Video Blocks is a video stock agency. And so what you can do is go in there, it's a subscription based service, and you can go download footage. So perhaps you need some aerial footage of Cityscape, or perhaps you need some location footage or something to tie your story together or your different cuts. Um, that's a really good use for that. They also have things like title cards and lower thirds. So if you need some enhancement on the header and tail of your video to help tell that story, or maybe even during if you're setting up interviews to use lower thirds, that's a great idea. They've got After Effects templates, so if you want to use motion graphics and infographics to help tell your story better, that's an excellent way to go. Anyway, they have a free trial right now for Art of Photography viewers, so if you want to go check out their library of video footage, After Effects templates, lower thirds, title cards, or also their sister company, Audioblock. So if you need audio for your video, uh, that's another very important component. And if you've ever put video on YouTube and you've ripped somebody else's MP3 track off, you probably notice that you get struck on that pretty quickly when YouTube runs that through its database. So it's really important that you have royalty-free music that fits the mood and is good. And Audioblocks certainly deliver that. Go check out the description for this video because I'm going to give you special links for both video blocks and audio blocks that are going to give you a one-week unlimited free free trial to check it out and evaluate and see what you think. And I want to give an extra special thanks to the folks at Video Blocks and Audio Blocks for sponsoring this episode of The Art of Photography. Anyway, Nathan, good luck to you. I hope this answers your question. And I wanted to share this with everybody because I think this is something that is becoming increasingly more important to understand as 
we move into the future, we're starting to see the lines blurred in media as to what that is visually. And so photographs and still photos will always remain still photos and they will always remain, they will always have their charm and their intimacy and all the things that make me attracted to still photos and I'm sure you guys too. But video is quickly becoming another way to tell a story and I think it's certainly an important skill to understand and get your head around and learn. I do a lot with video and obviously I'm a huge proponent of that. Um, anyway, that's about all I got for today. Just a few quick announcements, you guys. I'm going to be in Los Angeles all week this week. I will have a whole special video on that tomorrow for those of you who want to attend a meetup. We're going to do a meetup. Um, I don't have all the details yet, which is why I'm going to do a separate video tomorrow. But on Sunday, July 26, 2015, we are going to do a meetup and I will, it will be in the evening. I do not have a specific time yet. I'm working, I'm waiting on one last thing to get put to bed before I can tell you what that is. Uh, but I'll have a video up tomorrow to let you know. And I hope that if you're in the Los Angeles area, you can come out and meet with us and we'll find some food and hang out and talk photography and about the show or whatever you guys want to do. I think it'll be a lot of fun, but I'll have the times tomorrow on a show. Also, on Monday the 27th, I am speaking at a location called General Assembly, and I will put a link in the show notes as to how you can get tickets. It is absolutely free to come, and I'm going to possibly be on a panel, although we don't have that worked out just yet, so it'll at least be me and maybe some other people, and I'm going to talk a little bit about digital media, more of this video stuff, and how that pertains to photography and what I do in the realm of photography as somebody who who creates videos for YouTube. So I'll be there all week for VidCon, and I've got some other surprises that I will tell you about in the next video as well. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and share it with your friends, and as always, subscribe to The Art of Photography, so you'll always be up to date on all the latest and greatest videos that we produced. Come back tomorrow, and I'll give you LA details and all kinds of cool stuff that we're gonna be doing out there. So once again, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Later.